Oh, hi. There you are. Looking for you. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Trish. If you haven't already seen my videos before, check them out. I've got one on building gear diffs, building shocks, car setup, and I've got some more coming. So that isn't all that I've got to come. Check out my uh, GoPro onboard stuff for the cars. It's really cool. You see the car driving around and working. It's brilliant. But today I'm going to talk to you about the V3 bull diff for your Cougar laydown. You might be thinking, how on earth do I rebuild this? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, I will just show you what I do. It's pretty simple. I follow the instructions. But sometimes when you're doing it by yourself, you're wondering if you've done it right. Maybe this video will help you. This is aimed at people that don't have quite that experience. So I'm going to try my best to help you with that. Bear with me. Have a little watch. Don't fast forward to the end because you might miss some little bits here and there. But before we go into this, don't forget to click subscribe on the screen. There's also a little like button. So if you like it, click on it. I read some dislikes, but hey, you don't have to watch my videos. And also leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see on future videos. Right, let's crack on with it. First of all, we have the male end of this diff, um, which holds the bearings and various things um, on this part. So we'll just crack on and we'll get this done. It's pretty simple. Make sure it's clean first. If you're rebuilding a diff and you have dirt and various things, put it in some alcohol, give it a shake or some WD-40. Just get something to remove all the dirt and then just make sure it's clean make sure there's nothing no residue left over and then you can crack on and give your diff a rebuild i'm going to do it with fresh parts to build it but generally you'll be rebuilding it because it's gone like a pepper grinder it's gone crunchy it's barking on the track and you think oh i've got no grip anymore normally it's because it's gone and the balls have kind of squared off the plates got these kind of pitted grooves in there they're gonna gain grooves which is fine when they're running as a groove but as soon as you've just gone past the fact that they've run a bit too dry or they've just had too much of a long life you'll get this bad action of diff so the bull diff bit of history Cecil Schumacher came up with it many many moons ago when uh, Robin his son was racing and they had uh, solid axles on or effectively spools and they go around corners and the car of course would spin out and Cecil being Cecil we need to make a differential for this car so he came up with some balls and some plates and some springs compressing them together creating a differential action one could only go one way and one could only go the other way and therefore allow the cars to go around the corners a bit better now of course we have our gear diffs um, and other technologies that are out there on the larger scale cars that's a tiny bit of history for you look up some of the old stuff if you ever see Cecil at a racetrack which some of you might do ask him about it it's a brilliant story so we'll go into this so I have the shims here and the two bearings um, these are important parts because they will allow the car um, to operate properly not the car but the differential let's pop the shim on first as per the instructions then we've got the next shim and then the bearing. So you've got shim, bearing, shim, bearing. Make sure these operate nicely, they should do. Make sure there's no crunchiness coming from them, you don't put anything bad on. But this is all new stuff, it should be good. And generally these bearings, I've never had to replace them on a diff. Um, you just don't need to. Uh, I think they have such low loads, they're just working and rocking around. Unless you've been really mean to it, then maybe you'd have to or just re-oil them when you rebuild them. So anyway, there's this part here. So what we will do um, is we'll do the next step, nice and simple. We're gonna put some silicon diff lube on. There's many variants out there, different viscosities. Um, and basically viscosity, if you don't know what that is, it's basically how thick something is. Imagine treacle uh, versus uh, honey, slightly different to each other. They react slowly um, versus water. <laughs> water is super low on its, its viscous value. Um, so, you can uh, get an idea on that. Um, our grease is what we like to use. Um, the, what we find is over many, many runs, you can find that the grease can dry out. Uh, make sure you just reapply, clean off, reapply. Some greases, they dry very quickly and you get a kind of a horrible diff, but it, it still feels nice, but it's just gone dry. So just re-grease it. Whereas this stuff, it should stay wet the whole time, but just keep an eye on your diffs. You can make a diff last a lot longer if you just give it a bit of maintenance. In regards to maintenance, you're thinking, well, how often do I need to rebuild my diff? 
Well, if you're having a day that you're racing on a wet track or a loose dirt track or whatever, because you're thinking, well, it felt really nice in my last run, so what should I do? Um, my advice um, is at the end of that meeting, if you want to, if it felt really, really great and you'd rebuilt it before that meeting, maybe just leave it. Um, but if you really want to make sure it's good, just give it, just take it apart, um, re-grease it, put it back together, and um, it'll be good. I'm sure it'll be fine if you left it alone, but it's something that I would do just to make sure I have a good day the next time. So I've put my grease on uh, my little area where I've got this little silver ring here. And yours will probably be black, but sometimes I um, clean off this top layer just to make sure it's perfectly flat with a bit of sandpaper and a drill. I spin the output up, a uh, bit of sandpaper on, and you get a nice shiny ring. You'll see this on the V2 diffs. Um, I find the V3 diffs have been really, really good, but I do it out of kind of a necessity from years of doing the ball diffs. So I clean them up. I then drop my my washer on, or we could call them our diff plates, um, making sure it's concentric. There's not a lot of movement, but I always like to make sure everything's sitting concentrically. If you don't know what concentric is, it's basically a ring within a ring, perfectly equal all the way around the outside. So you could have concentric circles, which have the same equal gap all around the outside. So that is concentricity. I'm sure if you're into engineering, you already know about that. And also, if you already know all about this kind of stuff, you're probably not watching my video. Um, so this video is aimed at the, the kind of the hobby driver that's getting into this. They've had a gear different in for ages. And what they find is they don't want to put a ball diff in because they don't really, they're scared of it, they don't know how it's working. So anyway, we'll just put all this on quickly. So I'll just splodge it around, make sure the layer is good. And we need to make sure we put the diff gear on the right way up. So this is pointing up with these bits and on the inside you've got this little ring here. Make sure that is also pointing up. So that's in there, sitting there nicely. One little tip for you that I do is I put all my diff balls in the pots of my silicone grease nice and early on and so it's got some grease on there and they're all staying together so then I can pick them out, drop them in and they've got plenty of grease on them. When you run it they'll self-regulate anyway, they'll all um, pop out, um, that not they will pop out, the grease will it'll release basically, it will self-regulate so it will fire off anything extra it doesn't need. So now all I do, make sure I've got clean tweezers here. I uh, will drop each one in, we'll just put, put, put them in there and then we'll poke them in each hole eventually. Um, always a bit messy with the silicon. Sometimes you can be really clean when you do these things and sometimes you can be really messy. Don't forget, we're all human. If you make mistakes, knock this all over the floor. There is a chance you'll lose all your balls. And that is not good if you lose your balls. There are 14 of them. <laughs> make sure you have 14 of them when you go and collect them. I like to put things in, in, well, put these balls in the lid because of this reason. Stop them rolling away. So I pour the packet in gently and uh, make sure they stay in there. So I'm just dropping them in all the uh, holes right here. Um, and they'll just find their seat. There's the last one here. And that's good, I'm happy with that. So that is ready for the next stage, which will be um, for, in the instruction um, kits, we like to do the screw next. But I like to do the other half myself, get these two halves together, um, and then I'm happy. So uh, basically paint on over top of the silver ring. Some grease, not too much. Just enough to kind of wet it take off anything that's in excess and then we pop the ring around so that's good there again put some on here we've already got some of the balls so we don't have to go crazy on it but just make sure that it's not going to be running dry that's one of the most important bits it comes around there it's all good take off any excess right so now I just drop that on what I do is I push them together and I just have a little feel let the oil or well, the grease sorry shouldn't call it oil the grease sort itself out and that'll be sitting there ready for me um, just remember the part that you just put on I've put the female on 
um, and that's it in there that's on top and just remember um, that you're going to put the screw into the female end first so let's take a look at the screw again we need to build up an assembly and we have our thrust plates so they are here um, and you've got a flat side and a groove side and basically the groove side is used for one of the washers and the flat side is used for the other and basically one is to capture the ball and the other one is to just lay idle to wherever the top one is pushing the balls it means that the um, the PCD which is the the circle in which they follow in a certain diameter um, is is defined by only one if you try and do it by two and let's say for example the tolerancing and meant that um, one is slightly different to the other there'll be a bit of a fight so this means it it goes together nice and easy so let's pop these together so we're going to drop um, it so I've got the flat side uh, up and available to me so that's sitting there nicely I will then clean my scalpel which I used before oh, I use my tweezers I've put all the balls in my black molly grease so there's my black molly grease that I've got um, so there's my molly grease that we do um, and they're all sitting there ready to go, ready for action to drop in place here. So I'm going to drop these on. They've got grease in them already. I'm going to introduce some afterwards. I might have to do it in a second because they might start falling off because I haven't got enough. But let's have a look. But that drops on here. Oh, yeah, they're dropping off. All right, let's get a bit of grease on there. It helps stick it all together. It's a messy process, this. On the V2 diff, we had a cage of balls which is okay but this seems to give it a bit more freedom to get a nicer diff each time so let's just drop this on here that's the third ball we want six balls to go on there always keep track of your balls um, if you end up with five left that means one's got stuck somewhere and there's nothing worse than if you're missing a ball so drop that on there it's all looking good I might drop, <laughs> knock that over. What I'll do is I'll put that on my driver to give me a hand. That might be a nicer way for you to do it. So assemble it whilst you're on the end of a nice MIP driver. Um, and all I do now is I'll drop the other wash on, groove side down. So that's now going to control um, the pitch or the diameter of those balls. And what I do is I just pack in a little bit extra grease on the sides when I come in. There we go. Bit messy, but it'll be alright. No harm done. And what we'll do is we'll drop the screw inside the diff. So we'll come along here, and now we're holding the diff with the screw. So that's great. We then want to drop our washer, our spring, and our T-nut in. And all I do is I pick my get a 1.5 driver. This is my other MIP driver. I then put my spring on after putting it through the nuts. I've got my T nut, um, spring, and washer all together, and we're going to line it up with the hole over the screw. Ooh. We're going to drop it all on top. There we go. We just drop our T nut in place, and that should be good. And with the edges of your fingers, you can grab the edges of the T nut. And what we're going to do is we're going to start winding up, capture the, uh, the T nut, and you'll meet the nylon. And it will start getting tight and you'll be able to feel it resisting what you're doing you're tightening it up to a certain amount so i've tightened up a little bit and i'll just turn it and get the diff action just give it a couple of turns make sure it's working when you turn it this way that goes the other way so it's operating nicely sometimes if you try and assemble something um and you've done it wrong and you do it up things get bound up and damaged and then you can't fix them and you have to use new parts for this i can't see any big issues happening but I like to take my time with these things, so I do it up a bit more. Do it till it starts feeling how you want the ball diff to feel. Initially, you might be feeling that, ah, oh, I'm feeling the um, uh, the grease here. So fine, you need to keep tightening. Um, so at the moment, that feels nice. And what you can do is you can check the tightness of it. You'll get um, a 1.5mm driver and another 1.5mm driver. What I do is I'll get the output here and that output there, and I'll try and turn it. And that's almost there. I've got quite strong hands, uh, pretty tough skin on my thumb and finger. So for some people, that, that'll probably feel tight enough. I can just get it to move. And all I do is I'll check it again. That feels pretty nice. And I can tighten this up probably a little bit more to where I would have it. 
Um, one thing to consider um, is sometimes you might be tightening and you've gone up to the point that you've basically dented all the plates together and you're thinking, oh, I've ruined it. Yeah, you kind of have. You've put 14 kind of little dents in there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do it for you. We're going to tighten it up all the way and we're going to fix it. So we're going to tighten it until we've damaged it. I can't go any tighter than that. That's now gone solid. Okay. What you'll find is if you've done that and you've undone it, you'll get these dents. Leave it tight. If you realize you've gone fully tight, leave it tight and rotate it a couple of turns. And all you're going to do is you're going to create a groove and it's going to be kind of bedded in a little bit because of that. Turn it a few times, then back it off, kind of like an eighth. Have a little feel and you'll feel just as good as if you'd built it the first way around. Um, honestly, that will be absolutely fine. So like I said, if you have gone so far that you've got these little lumps as you're going around, um, it's because you've gone too far and now you have had to back off. I do it up until it feels about right. Like I said, do it up all the way, turn it a few times, back off the screw, it should feel really, really good. And that's how I build a ball diff. Um, again, maintenance wise, if you're an important race, you're doing Euros, you'd rebuild it after like three, four runs just to make sure you've got a good diff on the next one. Um, there's nothing worse than when it goes. So just be on top of it. It only helps your racing by being really good in your preparation, as everyone always says, um, PPP. Um, but obviously, if you uh, fail to prepare, you prepare to fail, basically, um, as I've said on the other video. But anyway, I hope you enjoy that. I hope it helps. We do have a V2 diff. Um, basically, the center assembly is all the same um, on the other side you have the Belleville washers follow the instructions it's easy enough um, you do need a circlip tool to get that undone but don't fret um, it's no big issue um, there might be a guy at the pits that's got one and they can always help you if they're a Schumacher driver of old um, if not you have to uh, purchase a set but the V3 diff doesn't have any of that it's two mil driver really to build this car obviously keep some one mil drivers or a, a flat um, a rule if you get a rule let's get this out here when you want to hold the diff outputs you can hold that with that and your 1.5 mil driver if you've only got one 1.5 mil driver which most people have or you might have a special tool that i've seen some in the past that are out there which have got two tongs that come through that hold it so you can have a feel anyway i hope you've enjoyed this i hope this will help you um if you're scared of ball diffs don't be um Ask me any questions. Find me some questions in the email. Um, it's trishbits at live.com or trish at racing-cars.com. Fire it over to either one of them and yeah, I'll help you out. Anyway, have a good day. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Goodbye.